Cicino. As part of our continuing coverage of Hispanic Heritage Month, Cheddar would like to highlight senior New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. Born to Cuban immigrant parents back in 1954, Menendez grew up in Union City, New Jersey, where an affinity for public speaking led him to a life in politics. In 2006, Menendez became only the sixth Hispanic to serve in the United States Senate. And Senator Bob Menendez joins us now. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. My first question for you, why is Hispanic Heritage Month so important? Well, good to be with you, Asia. Look, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month is important because it is a celebration of the contributions uh, of a community uh, that uh, has had a history in our country since before the founding of the nation. Uh, when uh, St. Augustine's, Florida, the oldest city uh, in America, was founded by uh, a gentleman named Pedro Aviles de Menendez, uh, when Bernardo de Galvez, uh, a Spanish uh, uh, acting governor in Louisiana, uh, led an all Spanish contingent against the British as they were advancing on George Washington. Uh, to the realities of the names on the v Vietnam War, this proportionally Latino uh, who died in defense of the nation, uh, to tremendous successes in the arts and sciences and so much more. So it is a celebration of all of that, uh, the largest minority, fastest growing uh, in the nation, a trillion dollar domestic marketplace uh, that comes from the community. And so uh, these are all the elements that we celebrate uh, at this time every year. Well said, we mentioned that your parents were Cuban immigrants. Were there any lessons that they instilled in you that you still serve, that serve you well today in the Senate? Well, you know, my, my mother uh, was my hero, is my hero. She's not alive with us uh, anymore. But uh, she was someone who had the courage to uproot herself from her country because she didn't like uh, what she saw uh, in, in Batista, a dictator of the right. She didn't like what she saw in the Sierra Maestra with Castro. And she uprooted uh, our family, uh, then my brother and sister and uh, my father, to come to the United States and start all over again. Uh, with no guarantees and not a full understanding of the language customs and uh, no uh, job guarantees. Uh, and I think about the courage it takes to uproot yourself to start all over again because you don't want your children, my, my brother and sister at that time, uh, to grow up in such a country. So that's the type of courage and determination she had. Hard work and sacrifice. Uh, she was a seamstress in the factories of Hudson County. Uh, and I would look at her and often wonder how, after a long, hard day of work, she'd come at home. She'd say, sit down and read your homework to me. I'd say to her, you don't understand English. And she said, that's what you think. Uh, read it to me. And it was <laughs> an expression of the importance of education. Uh, I learned about equal pay for equal work when she was so good at what she did that they told her to work on the floor in the factory and help other workers. But she never got paid with guys who were the uh, floor managers got paid. Uh, so that taught me about equal work for equal pay. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, she had a long struggle with Alzheimer's. Uh, and it taught me about the intergenerational challenges we face as families when we have a loved one who's ill as we try to educate our children and also take care of our loved one in the twilight of their lives. So many life lessons came uh, from her. So many powerful lessons, and I'm sure so many that others can relate to out there. She sounds like a really strong woman. But I want to go ahead and switch gears because we are coming off the heels of a debate last night. You are an ardent critic of President Trump. So what were your biggest takeaways? Well, my first of all, I, I think it, it was uh, a national embarrassment and the world was watching. Uh, and uh, I, I'm convinced the president knows that he's on the course to losing and the only way that he can survive is by trashing the process, trashing the electoral uh, uh, process, the, the casting of ballots, creating doubt uh, about the whole element. Uh, you know, he, he couldn't he couldn't speak to one thing that's important in the lives of the American people. You know, he he, he knew about the pandemic well before the rest of us did. He knew how deadly it was. Uh, he lied and 200,000 people died. Uh, he didn't pay uh, what the normal person 
in our country pays. He didn't pay a centile of that. The teacher, the police officer, the sanitation worker, all paid far more than Donald Trump's uh, no, no, no tax payments for 10 years or $750 in the last two years. Uh, that's outrageous. The reason we pay taxes is for the public good. Uh, and then, you know, he, he, he has no sense uh, about our standing in the world and our ability uh, to regain allies, which we have lost under his leadership. So, um, you know, the, the reality is I, I thought the debate was a national disgrace. He can't even abide by the rules of a debate, much less does he think that the laws of the country apply to him. You brought up taxes. You were on the Senate floor yesterday blasting the president over his reported tax documents. Let's go ahead and play that clip when it came up last night. The president is a liar, a cheat, and a fraud. For years, he marketed himself as a self-made successful businessman. But it's all an illusion. And as we said last night during the debate, the president claimed that he's actually been paying millions in taxes, not $750, unclear on whether he was talking about federal income tax, which was the question. But I think the real question here is, do you think that the American people and voters actually care about this issue? Well, look, I, I think no one uh, uh, is happy to pay taxes, but they certainly are extremely unhappy uh, when the president of the country pays nothing and they pay more than their fair share. Uh, this is a president who ha is the only president in modern history who has not released his tax returns. So the question is, what's he hiding? We need to know, for example, in the huge debt that he possesses, several hundred million dollars, how much of that is foreign debt and who is holding that debt? Uh, who's into the president and what interests do they have? The American people deserve to know that. Uh, several national security experts say that raises a serious national security question. So whether it's fairness and justice in terms of participating in the collective needs of all of us by paying your fair share, or whether it is about our national security uh, and not showing your taxes because you don't want to show who you owe to foreign countries and foreign individuals, uh, this is something that I think does resonate at the end of the day because people work hard, they pay their taxes, they expect the President of the United States to do the same. Senator, really quickly, something that also came up during the debate was the President trying to push through a new nominee for the Supreme Court, Judge Amy Comey, uh, Amy Comey Barrett. So will you be voting uh, against the appointment of Judge Barrett? Look, this is not a process that is acceptable. Millions of people are voting already. They should have a say in who nominates the next president, uh, excuse me, the next uh, Supreme Court justice by virtue of being elected as president. Uh, and it worries me deeply that President Trump said, well, we have to get this nominee directly uh, uh, to the court because they, they will decide the election. Well, in America, I thought that the people decide the election, not some justice on the Supreme Court. So because of the process, I won't even get into the merits uh, or a lack thereof. Amy Comey Barrett, of course, opposes the Affordable Care Act, has said that Justice Roberts uh, didn't decide it correctly. That means the end of health protections for millions of Americans, the end uh, of health coverage for millions of Americans, the end of pre-existing conditions protections for millions of Americans, a woman's right to choose. Uh, so no, if this, in fact, nomination does come up for a vote, which it should not before the election, uh, then uh, I certainly would not be voting for her. There's also been talk uh, after this debate that there shouldn't be participation from candidate Joe Biden um, to participate in further debates just because of the talk over each candidate and the interruptions and the way that it played out. How do you feel about this? Do you think it's realistic that there wouldn't be any other debates moving forward before Election Day? Well, I think that the Commission on Presidential Debates uh, has to get their act in order. Uh, there should be a kill button uh, for the moderator when any of the two candidates uh, exceeds their time or speaks over the other. There's no value in a debate 
where President Trump acts like a China and a, and a you know a, a bull in a China closet wants to muscle his way through because he doesn't want to talk about how he's failed in the pandemic and hundreds of thousands and millions uh, are infected. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about how the economic consequences from his failure of leadership has led us to a, a dismal time. He doesn't want to talk about that he has no plan for health care, even as he seeks to destroy the Affordable Care Act. Uh, so I think the, uh, there should be debates, but there has to be a different system in which the moderator has to have some control, uh, because otherwise the American people get nothing and the nation is further humiliated. Senior Senator from New Jersey, Bob Menendez, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your insight.